like to say a great day to the viewing audience. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit. I am Dr. Stefan Williams and I will be your host for today's program. We're going to continue on with our series entitled The Comparison of the Heart to Elohim, Yahshua in the Flesh. And I would like for those of you to view this broadcast today to get out your Bibles, your notebooks, your pens, your pencils, your highlighters, and study with us. Let's continue on with the series. It says, although the heart suffered the abuses of the body and is long suffering from the standpoint of its patience in enduring these abuses, there comes a time when it ceases to perform in its usual manner. Suddenly, in the night, in most cases, it quits its functioning heart attack. And life goes out of the body. It is the fear of such a happening that makes most people heart conscious, especially when they are told that there is something wrong with their heart. or whenever they experience symptoms of heart disease, such as pain in the chest and shortness of breath. On such occasions, the individual really th then begins to think in terms of his heart. Even though he may never have paid it any attention before, everyone respects his heart. He stops his abuses and dissipation and begins to live a moderate, temperate life. Such timely warning from the heart makes one conscious of his heart and brings about a change in one's disposition towards his heart. Elohim, likewise, is long-suffering to us war, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I'll be reading 2 Peter, the third chapter, verses 9 and 10 from the Holy Name Bible. It says, Yahweh is not slacking concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards war not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief of the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise in the elements shall mount with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. And if you come down here on this chart here, it says inorganic earth. And you see there's fire 
right in the middle of the earth. See, there was fire burning right in the middle of the earth as I'm speaking this day. It never goes out. Okay? So the heavens and the earth shall melt with fervent heat, with the heavens and earth being on fire. Why? Because you see this fire going all the way around this chart. This whole universe is, is surrounded by fire as I speak. Why? Because Yahweh is a consuming fire himself. He chastens us from time to time to remind us as a parent chastening a child that we should walk circumspectly before him. For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye, if ye endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and are not sons. And that's according to Hebrew, the 12th chapter, verses 6 to 8. Now I'll be reading that from the Holy Name Bible. Hebrew, the 12th chapter, verse 6 and 8. Holy Name Bible says, For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye, re if ye endure chastening, Yahweh deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, Whereof, are, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. And this is Yahweh, who is pure spirit. He substance essence, he is formless in his abstract or pure spirit state of existence. Okay, he's the father, and we are the son. In reality, Yahweh is the father, and Yahweh is the son. When one is chastening of Yahweh, once again, when one is chastening of Yahweh is when there is sickness of, or death in the family, bad luck of all, of all sorts, disputes with our so-called friends, etc. One remembers Yahweh and gives respect unto him. Here. Once again, when one is chastening of Yahweh, is when there is slackness, or excuse me, when one is chastening of Yahweh, is when there is sickness or death in, in the family, bad luck of all sorts, disputes with our so-called friends, etc. One remembers Yahweh and gives respect unto him. But when one is having so-called good luck, once again, but when one, but when one is having so-called good luck and everything is fine, Yahweh left completely out of the picture. However, the day of Elohim will come as a thief in the night. I need a red reader, please. First Thessalonians five and two, please. 
1 Thessalonians 5 and 2 from the Holy Name Bible. For yourselves know it perfectly that the day of Yahweh cometh, so cometh as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. Thank you, reader. which time the heavens and the earth will be rolled up like a scroll. And that's according to Isaiah the 13th chapter, verse 13. I need that read, please. Isaiah 13 and 13 from the Holy Name Bible. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of Yahweh of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Thank you, reader. And you notice here on this, on this chart here, this is a scroll. See, it's still rolled up at the top here and rolled up at the bottom here. Just let some, you know, let let it down some. Well, y'all, we're going to roll this creation up like a scroll. See, the scroll has to be rolled up. It's completely going to be wiped out, meaning the heavens and the earth. See? And, all, and all that therein shall be burnt up. I need also read reader please Revelation the sixth chapter and verse in verse fourteen. Revelation six and fourteen from the Holy Name Bible. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Thank you, reader. Once again, however, the day of Yahweh Elohim will come as a thief in the night, at which time the heavens and earth will be rolled up like a scroll and pass away. Yahweh will, will not forever tolerate our ignorance of him. Our foolishness and our vanity and our vanities. For he has a point of the time when he will judge the world in righteousness, and that day is not far off, but it is right on us. Once again, Yahweh will not forever tolerate our ignorance of him, our foolishness, and our vanities. For he has a point of the time when he will judge the world in righteousness, and that day is not far off, but it is right on us. It will be a massive heart attack for all of us, for all men's hearts will fail. I need a red reader, please. Luke, the 21st chapter and verse 26, please. Luke 21 and 26 from the Holy Name Bible. Man's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the power of heaven shall be shaken. Thank you, reader. Help get a few of these here. And it says here, heaven. Heaven. 
heaven. not a geographical location. Heaven is a state of consciousness. Right? Read that once again for the viewed audience, please. Luke 21 and 26, please, once again. We'll leave it here. Make sure you can see the heavens. Read, please. Luke 21 and 26 from the Holy Name Bible. Men hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the power of heaven shall be shaken. For the power of heaven shall be shaken. So you see there just one, two, three plates. In, the, in columns here. Right. One, two, three plates. Three plates, one column. Why do I, why am I put emphasis on this here? Because these three plates, which is three plates, one column, correlates with, with man's physical body. Okay? So man's head cavity is likened to heaven or like the throne of Yahweh who is sitting or in or, or, or inhabited heaven. Okay? See this top part here that says heaven? This middle part here is like a two chest region. And this bottom plate here is likened to the court round about of the outer court. Okay? Or the abdominal cavity of man. Chest cavity of man. Okay, head region of man. Likened to the first heaven, second heaven, or third heaven, or third or third heaven, or first heaven, second heaven. Third heaven. Okay? And we see here pictorial illustration of Yahshua Messiah. See, who is in heaven as we speak. Heaven meaning in your most holy place. On your throne. Or on his throne, which is his throne is your throne, meaning your throne is his throne. Okay, that he's sitting on your throne, okay? Governing and dictating and leading and guiding your consciousness, okay? From the third heaven. It says here, when Elohim is revealed from heaven, okay? So let every one of us take heed and be more conscious, see, of Yahweh, see, rather than heart conscious, for though our fleshly hearts fail, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, see, who is Yahshua the Messiah, see, same one here, the same one here, this Yahweh in shape and form, okay? In your conscience, see? We have, we shall live forevermore in that glorified state, see? In the kingdom of our, of our Yahweh, see? see? We shall live, see? Forevermore in that glorified state, see? In the kingdom of our Eloah of our or of our father Yahweh. Okay. And 
And that will conclude this series. But we're going to do a few minutes of a recap. Okay? All right? So, head over here for the being audience. <clears throat> we understand that the brain or the head region, which the brain is 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 uh, uh, is in the head region. All right, and being and and in this uh, and in your brain is Yahweh controlling all of the bodily functions. Is coming from the dictates of the brain. Okay. See, your brain is likened to Yahweh, and your heart is likened to Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, who was in the bosom of the Father. All right. I need red reader, please. John one, and about. Um, let's see here. John 1, let me get to it, John the first chapter, and verse 18. John 1 and 18 from the Holy Name Bible. No man has seen the Father at any time. No man has seen the Father. No man has ever looked inside of his own brain. So no man has seen the Father Yahweh, read. At any time. At any time. Read on. The only begotten Son which was in the bosom of the see, Father. The only begotten Son who was in the bosom of the Father. He or shall, the chest region of the Father, read. He shall reveal him to us. He shall reveal him unto us. Okay? So you see it here. This is like unto the bosom of the Father. You understand? And he shall reveal the Father unto us by divine visions. This is truly the Father in shape and form as the Son. And we now as and now and, and we now as sons now are able to have our Father reveal Himself to us. Okay. I need Red Reader, please, Leviticus 16 and 2. Leviticus 16 and 2. From the Holy Land Bible. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the most holy place within the veil, mm -hmm. before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thank you, reader. So Yahweh said he will appear in the cloud or in your head cavity. Which is likened unto, which is in there, likened unto him sitting on the throne or the mercy seat within your head cavity. Okay? He will appear or reveal himself. Well, the Son will reveal the Father to us. Alright? Keep it here. See everything here. The cranial or head cavity of man's physical body corresponds with the most holy place of the Mosaic tabernacle, see. The right and left halves of the brain which come together in the midline correspond with the two archangels, see. Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, see. And the two main functions of the brain, one, in carrying out some action motor function like unto 
Archangel Michael, see, which corresponds to the duty of Archangel Michael and two, the sending and receiving of messages like to Archangel Gabriel, sensory function corresponds with the duty of Gabriel. Okay? All right? And that will conclude our series. We're going to begin a new series next week entitled Heart Transplantation. Until we meet again next week, I'd like to leave with these few words. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the precious kingdom of Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.